Need dinner in a pinch? This recipe will be done in no time. Welcome back to At The Table, Sydney here, and I am joined by my friend Cassidy Hall, who is the FCS agent in Johnston County. Thank you for being here, Cassidy. No problem. Thank you for asking me. Yes. So Cassidy's going to do me a solid favor, of course, and while I'm on maternity leave, she's going to be taking over and doing a couple shows for you guys. So we're going to do a few shows together just so y'all can um, see us together in action, which you've seen us before. I think it's been about a year. Cassidy was on and she did several shows. We did a whole series together. Um, so she's phenomenal. Y'all should be familiar with her, but she is wonderful. And I know that you will love her as your new host for a short while. So we're going to do um, just quick recipes today, right? Yes. We've got three-ish yeah. recipes. And the first one is one that you did with your, your kids at camp? Yes, yeah, so every summer uh, Cooperative Extension has 4-H summer fun camps and this year I led one in Johnston County where we took a group of kids to a lot of different farms. It was farm to fork so they got to see and get their hands in agriculture and then they were able to take those produce items back to the office and we in well Sampson County as well but Johnston County too we are big producers of sweet potatoes and this was one of the recipes that the kids had an absolute blast with but it didn't necessarily have the healthiest ingredients so today we have made a couple of adjustments which we'll talk about as we get started but um this is now one of my absolute favorite recipes and I plan to make it all the time now. Yeah, I cannot wait to taste it. So these are sweet potato, muffins, chocolate chip bread type thing. So I'll let Cassidy get started. I'm gonna be working on our dry ingredients, but I'll let you kind of take the floor and then I'll all right. do things as you tell me to. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so as Sydney is working on our dry ingredients, we're going to get started with the wet. Now, one question that the kids ask me every single year, they're like, do we have to keep it all separate? And I shouldn't say just kids, adults are like this too. Yes, whenever you are baking, you want to keep your wet ingredients and your dry ingredients separate until it's time to mix them all together. Um, whenever you are working with your dry ingredients and you have spices, whether it's salt, baking powder, baking soda, you want to be able to mix it all together. And keeping your wet separate is another way um, to just make sure everything gets combined pretty uniformly. So we're going to start out with our egg. I like to make sure that I'm cracking it on a fairly flat surface just to make sure I don't get eggshells in there. So this recipe, we just need one egg, not very much. And then we are going to combine this with about a cup of a mashed sweet potato. Now, Sweet potatoes have a reputation for taking a long time to cook. Certainly, we have Instant Pots now, so you can cook your sweet potato in there. But I like the microwave method. Um, you can also put sweet potatoes in a crock pot for a few hours. You just wash them. You don't have to wrap them in foil. Put them in a crock pot, and then they are done when you get home from work. But I put these two in the microwave for, eh, I guess it was roughly 10 minutes. Um, but you just poke a couple holes in there and pop them in the microwave. Be sure to, t to kind of periodically check them. You might have to rotate them a couple times, but very, very simple to cook in the microwave. And roughly one potato, if it's a medium to large size, should give you about a cup of that sweet potato flesh. So we'll go ahead and get that in there. And next we're going to add in vegetable oil. The original recipe called for a quarter cup of um, coconut oil. However, coconut oil is very, very high in saturated fats, which is what we want to limit in our diet. So today we are going to use vegetable oil, but you could use any sort of liquid oil. Liquid at room temperature is typically a good um, thing to shoot for, but with the coconut, you want to be careful, regardless if it is solid or if it is room temperature. So 
So we'll go ahead and get a quarter cup in there and meet you guys back here. Introducing the Star Communications app. All the tools you need in one convenient location. You can access Watch TV everywhere. Check local channel lineup. Check your Star email. View and pay your Star bill. Report troubles. Use your Star security app. Check your home voicemail. Sign up for CrowdFiber. Check your Wi-Fi speed. The list keeps going and going. Download for free from the App Store or Google Play. All right, welcome back, guys. So um, Cassidy's been working on our wet ingredients. While she was doing that, I've got our dry ingredients done over here. So what we added, we did some whole wheat flour. Um, this is a whole grain flour, so if you're looking for whole grains, which, of course, we talk about all the time about how important whole grains are. They're great for our heart. They're great for cleaning us out. They also are great for helping us to feel full for longer. So we want to make sure we're choosing at least half of our grains to be whole. So we actually did a cup of whole wheat flour and then we took some um, old fashioned oats or quick oats. Actually, I think we used a blend. You can use whatever you have on hand and we threw it into a food processor and just ground it up. So we made an oat flour as well. If you have any allergies to um, gluten, you can typically do oat flour. However, there are some facilities that there is still some cross-contamination, so you need to be careful about that. Um, so we have a mix of two different flours. Then we have our baking soda, baking powder, and um, we cut back on the brown sugar. So it called for a third of a cup of brown sugar. We just did a quarter of a cup. Now keep in mind we've got 12 whole muffins here. Um, so, you know, you are not getting a whole quarter of a cup in every single muffin that you're eating. Um, but that's just one way we could scale back just a little bit, but we're not gonna completely change the flavor of these muffins. We still want them to be really tasty and have that sweetness to them as well. And then we have just cinnamon and a little bit of salt. So pretty easy. Most of these ingredients you probably have already in your pantry as it is. Um, if you don't have whole wheat flour, they could probably do white flour, mm -hmm. right, Cassidy? And then you could still have that oat flour, so you're getting at least half of that to be whole grain of those, um, that oat flour. So I'm going to finish stirring this up. Cassidy, what do you have next? I've got our quarter cup of oil. Um, as I was mentioning before our break, you want to make sure that you're using something that's liquid at room temperature compared to, say, melted butter. Um, and again, we were substituting in the place of coconut oil, vegetable oil, olive oil, canola oil. That's just a healthier heart alternative, well, heart healthier alternative to our oil. Whereas that coconut, regardless if it's solid at room temperature, liquid at room temperature, um, it's very high in saturated fat, which again, we want to limit that in our diet. So I'm mixing these ingredients together. In our bowl, we have currently our egg, we have our sweet potato, and we have our oil. Next, what I'm going to add in, Sydney has some brown sugar in the dry ingredients, but I'm also going to add um, about a tablespoon of honey. And whenever you do this, you wanna make sure that you go ahead and spray your spoon, and that will help your honey or whatever kind of liquid sweetener you have to come out a little easier. So we'll do one tablespoon. Getting an arm workout with this honey. <laughs> if you do the other one, let me know. I can grab it for you. Let's try that. If you don't have honey, the original recipe has also called for um, maple syrup. So that's a good, a good sweetener you can add in there. Now keep in mind whether it is maple syrup, whether it's honey, if it's agave nectar, whatever sort of sugar you are adding to an ingredient, it still counts as added sugar. Just because it's unrefined doesn't make it count as a natural sugar. So we're still trying to get this honey out, working on our arm workout as we are preparing our muffins. Now this recipe you can have as muffins, as we mentioned, or you can bake it in a loaf pan and it'd be more of a sweet potato chocolate trip bread. Um, another substitution that we've got to go into our bowl, we did not have Greek yogurt on hand, so we are substituting with our own homemade buttermilk. So we combined a little bit of lemon juice with some milk, 
and we need less of that than with our Greek yogurt. So I'm going to also add in three tablespoons plus a teaspoon of our milk mixture. So we'll go ahead and do that. There is one, two, three, and we need a teaspoon. All right, so we've got all these ingredients together. We're going to mix in our dry ingredients and then fold in our chocolate chips. And you want to do this sort of a little at a time to make sure that it gets incorporated really well. So we'll go ahead and get this going. And this batter will not be quite as wet or liquidy as what you may be used to with traditional muffins, but I promise you this is a, a recipe that everyone in your family is going to enjoy. And I can smell that cinnamon. And the great thing about this recipe too is we are getting those sweet potatoes in, so you're getting that's our, our state vegetable. So you're getting that state vegetable. Those are something that are available all year long. So we have sweet potatoes right here available to us no matter what time of year it is. So you could really make this recipe anytime. Um, and it's a great way to get in, kind of sneak in a vegetable. So uh, the sweet potatoes give it that good sweetness so that maybe in the future we could even cut back the sugar a little bit more. Um, we were just scared to go too far away from our original recipe, but you can adjust and monitor as you see fit. I do that a ton with recipes. As I um, have family recipes that might have tons of sugar in them, I'll start trying to cut things back or adjust them just like Cassidy and I have done here today. Um, you'll see that we do this all the time with tons of recipes to try to make them a little bit healthier. So don't be scared to make a family recipe that you've had for a while and just switch it up in a way that will be better for your family. So once you get that done, Cass, you're gonna add in those chocolate chips, right? Yep, we are gonna put those chocolate chips in and actually I think I'm gonna hold off on adding in the rest of our dry ingredients. This is looking exactly like what I would expect with sort of a muffin or a bread recipe. So we're gonna go ahead, fold in those chocolate chips and we'll meet you guys back. Just because something may work doesn't mean it's right for your business. Let Star Communications knowledgeable consultants help you customize a hosted voice system that's right for you. Our dedicated experts work with you to understand your business needs and guide you at every step from choosing and installing services to ongoing maintenance and support. Contact Star today. All right, we have our muffins in our muffin pan. You can do this recipe in a bread pan as well. I saw that on our recipe. So if you don't have a muffin pan, then and you just have a long bread loaf pan, you can go that route. Um, we've got a little bit of mixture left over here. I'm just gonna add, but you guys can whoop, kind of see our consistency here. Is It's thick and wet, but it's not, um, it's not too wet, so it's not like a really runny mixture. That's exactly what we want. So, we're gonna throw these into the oven, and I think these take like about 40 minutes. It really depends. So if you're, if you're using a, a loaf pan, it might take a little bit longer, but if you're doing the muffin, pan, the muffin tins, it might be 20, 25 minutes. It just kind of depends on how long? Yeah, okay. and you know, ovens can heat a little differently, so I would just keep an eye on it, but you can always stick a toothpick in to keep a check on it, and once it comes out, you know that you're good to go. Perfect. Well, I'm going to throw these into our oven, and you're going to start on our next recipe, which yes. is one of your favorites, right? Yes, this recipe is one that my family always requests at gatherings. They say, Cassidy, can you please make your green beans. And so I've just got a little bit of oil in our pan here. Now you can use, these are frozen green beans. Um, you could also switch it up and use fresh. Either way, doesn't matter. Um, but we're just gonna get those going with a nice saute. 
Now, if you're in a pinch, sometimes I'm preparing meals for just myself and I always like to have a vegetable whenever I'm cooking. And so these steam in a bag or if you have one of those, um, I guess you could say devices that you just pop in your microwave and it will steam your green beans for you. You can do this exact same seasoning with steamed green beans. They don't necessarily have to be sauteed. However, I really like whenever you get them down and there's just that little bit of char to them, that is my favorite way to have green beans. And this bag had a little bit of a stem. So if you're using frozen, be sure to have an eye out for that. But we're just gonna stir these around in our pan. And I know traditionally people like to put butter, lard, bacon grease, all kinds of things into green beans. However, this olive oil is a nice addition of a healthy fat. It's got a very neutral flavor. And once we get these going a little bit, we're gonna make sure that they've cooked down just a little bit so they're not quite so frozen. Um, if this was thawed, then you wouldn't have to, you would be able to skip this step. But we're just gonna move these around in the oil to coat them a little bit, prevent them from sticking, get our olive oil in. And then we're gonna add in some Montreal steak seasoning. You could use other seasonings. I have done this with salt, pepper, Italian, and garlic seasonings. Um, but my go-to for nearly every vegetable is this Montreal steak seasoning. Um, it's, it's low in sodium, it has a lot of flavor, and it's pretty versatile. So we're just gonna go ahead and add that in. And I always like to salt my vegetables after they have cooked. So this of course has tons of flavor. However, everyone's salt preferences kind of, they're different. If you aren't used to eating a lot of sodium um, containing foods, then you probably have a little bit lower of a tolerance for your taste of salt. So adding it at the end really makes it where every person can kind of make it their own. That way you don't have anyone saying, this is too salty or this is not salty enough. You can always add it in, but you can never take it out. Now once these cook down a little bit more and get a softer texture to them, then we're going to add in our reduced sodium soy sauce. Now this soy sauce, it's not necessarily low sodium, but it does have less than the original. That's what the term reduced means. So whether you see it on chicken broth, vegetable broth, anytime you see reduced, whether it's fat, reduced sodium, reduced sugar, yes, it is less than the original. However, you wanna check your nutrition facts label. It may not actually be low in that ingredient. But once we get this into our pan, we're gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be just one serving of green beans. It's gonna be split between multiple servings. So let's turn our heat down just a little bit. That way we're not popping oil. Now I wanted to add um, a few things just in terms of thinking of quick recipes, because that's what we're focused on here, is thinking of ways that you can make a dinner in a pinch. So um, this one Cassidy has done, I've actually had, she made a honey garlic green bean mm -hmm. recipe one time that was yeah. really good. So you can do tons of different flavors with the green beans. One thing that I do all the time is I'll buy just the frozen okra. I'm obsessed with okra, that's my favorite vegetable. And I'll throw it into the air fryer and I'll get the whole okra pods, throw it into the air fryer, it takes maybe 15 minutes or so, and air fry that. So it's very low in terms of how much maintenance it takes. You literally open the bag, throw it in. I'll toss it halfway through and add in my salt and pepper, whatever seasonings I wanna do for that. So there's other vegetables that you can do um, that are all still really healthy for you. Any vegetable that you enjoy, you can buy frozen for the most part. Mm -hmm. And you can do that air fry method or you can do what Cassidy's doing over here. So we're gonna let her finish up these green beans. We'll see you guys back in just a second to do our last recipe. Let's get out of here. Protect what matters most in your life. With security from Star Communications. Welcome back everybody.
everybody. We've had these green beans cooking during the break. So now I'm just gonna add in about an eighth of a cup of the reduced sodium soy sauce. And if you think that's too much, that's okay. You can just add a few tablespoons instead. Um, but some of this is gonna cook down into your pan, so it's really not a huge deal. Um, but if you want to, you can always add just a little drizzle of honey to sweeten it up. That's one way you can prepare these. But I really like to have them just kind of as they are with the soy sauce, with the steak seasoning, the olive oil. Um, if you need to add a little salt and pepper, that's fine too. One thing that we really love to make sure that we reiterate to people is that healthy eating does not have to be expensive. Um, of course, we are using frozen green beans and whenever vegetables are harvested for the purpose of freezing, they are immediately sent to the packing facility where they are flash frozen. And this locks in those nutrients and gives it a longer shelf life, you could say, um, which is why your frozen vegetables tend to be cheaper. Now, if frozen is not an option, and we do live in a region that is often affected by hurricanes, canned vegetables are also a good option to have on hand. With your canned, you do wanna be sure that you are looking for no salt added. Um, you can always add in your own seasoning, add your own salt, that is totally fine. It's when it is added in for you that we tend to get way too much in our diet. However, if those options, if the unsalted options aren't available to you, you can always dump them into a colander and rinse them under running cool water. And I always like to tell people, just until you don't see any more of kind of the, the bubbles, um, that's usually a good indicator and that helps to reduce the sodium content by about 30 to 40%. Um, however, whenever vegetables are in season, yes, absolutely. Fresh is best when they are in season. If they're not in season, you are paying extra fees to get them from wherever they were grown to your grocery store. So you are absorbing that cost. And especially when vegetables are out of season, your frozen and canned options are much better. But that's all there is to this recipe. Um, we are gonna pair this with a pulled chicken slider. And Sydney is actually working on shredding our chicken. Now, if you have a crock pot full of chicken, this is an excellent way to be able to meal prep for the week. You can use that chicken for chicken salad, chicken quesadillas, chicken on top of a salad, or in this case, the pulled chicken sliders. So Sydney, how's it going over there? It's going, my arms are tired, I will say. <laughs> so there are a couple techniques, and I decided to go the, um, I guess, less cleanup route, which is two forks and shredding your chicken by hand. Now this is three pounds of chicken, so it's a lot more chicken than really we needed today. Um, depends on your family size and how much you would need, but uh, you can throw this into, if you have a KitchenAid, you can use one of those to shred your chicken for you. It works wonders. Um, or, Cassidy just told me about one of her friends who does uh, a hand mixer. So similar to a KitchenAid, you know, but it's just one that plug in and do by hand. So you have a couple options there if you maybe have issues with your hands, with your wrists, um, anything like that to where this might be a little much for you. But that looks pretty good. We got it shredded for the most part. This is just chicken breast. Um, you could do a mixture. I know that chicken has been expensive, so keep that in mind. Um, you can do really any cut of meat here I think would be good on this. Pork mm -hmm. would also be delicious um, or uh, beef as well. So whatever you can find, we are all about saving money as well, but we still wanna be of course mindful of our health. And our white meat chicken breast is gonna be a little bit leaner in terms of that saturated fat. So I just added a little salt and pepper here. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is some bone sucking sauce because it's so good <laughs> and it's local. So we're, we're gonna add just a little bit of this to make kind of a barbecue chicken for our sliders. As Cassidy said, there's tons of recipes out there um, that you could do. You could save half of this and don't add the barbecue sauce and use it in other stuff. We're gonna do the whole thing because I like barbecue chicken. I don't mind it thrown on a salad. I think it's good thrown into a quesadilla. I think it's delicious. Um, by itself, honestly. You don't even have to pair it with anything else. You can just have this on the side with your, your veggies. So there's lots of stuff you can do with this to make it really good. 
Um, I also love to do barbe homemade barbecue chicken pizzas are one of my other faves. So, once we got this where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and just build our slider here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my chicken. I think that's the bottom. Of course, you can adjust however much you want to use up here. Um, of course, to make it a little healthier, we wanted to add some veggies. So we are gonna add just a little bit of roasted peppers and onions. This is another um, time-saving tip. So if you have any vegetables that are left over, you can add those to your recipe, or to your slider, I guess, since that's what we're making. And that will um, absolutely help to beef it up a little bit with some veggies. Of course, we have our green beans on the side, so I'm making a mess. We have our green beans on the side, so we'll have those veggies there as well, but I like to find ways to sneak veggies into my meat as well because, you know, the men in the family tend to eat that the most, and that way the kids will also hopefully yes. get some of that. So super easy. Anything else you want to add, Cassidy? We'll just put our green beans on the plate, and, and our muffins should be out shortly, and we have a full meal. So quick, easy, something that you can do at home, um, especially as things start to get really busy this month. So thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see you guys next time on At the Table.